Hello, hello. Can people hear me? Hello, people. Lana, hello. Nine Walker, hello, hello. Good evening, everybody. Oh, ho, ho. what's this timing? <laughs> uh, um, hey, Alex. KBS, hello. Oh my goodness. Um, we are just literally just beginning the stream tonight uh, welcome um, everybody who came from Alex's uh, stream uh, Vaughn thank you so much for the uh, four months um, welcome welcome everybody great timing yeah we're about to start I apologize for the alarm outside I have no clue why the car alarm is going off <laughs> there's a problem out there I don't know but uh, what's my favorite 60% layout um I like HHKB a lot, uh, but I would say I, I like standard, like poker. Um, so basically this plus with, uh, with, with the, without the blockers. Someone's robbing the car, not my car, fortunately, so not much to worry about. But I do apologize for the extra noise. And if you hear like a fan in the background, that's actually my AC running because it's pretty hot. <laughs> Me llamo Saver. <laughs> 
Goose and AX V2.2. Today's stream is packed. We just started. We just started. But I mean, this is great timing. If you want to see a build from 0 to 100, you know, welcome everybody. Um, thank you so much for the follow, every, uh, follows everybody. Um, for those who just arrived, thank you so much. Um, how come Black Inks have bottom out of 80 gram on KBD but 70 on NK? Mm, I will say they're actually more like 70 um, based on my experience with them. Fantasy Runner, hello. Um, hey, Champ Lemon. Oh, hey, man. Thank you so much for the uh, six months. I know that the notifications are kind of slow today, huh? What decimate am I using? I'm using the, um... Oh, so these headphones... Actually, these IEMs are not on the command, but these are the Shure SC215s. Um, the desk mat is the Apollo desk mat from TX Keyboards. I got a Zenith because of your stream? Oh, that's excellent. That's awesome. Um, it'll be uh, a while till it ships, though. So, I guess... There's going to be a bit of time to wait there. Nice over. Thank you, thank you. Different caps from the M6? Yeah. Um, let's start off with a few things. Um, so I actually got some mail. So I got some mail. I got some mail. I got some mail. And I guess that's just a sticker. Oh, Rama Cap. Um, I did your KC build recently. Oh, uh, the Kikal build recently. I actually, I'm wanting to rebuild uh, soon. So let's start off. So this is my Holo MK sticker. I actually just transferred them over, but I got the Crimson Cadet Symbols kit. Um, so it's just the. Uh, red kit with the cadet symbols. I, I actually got this for like macro pads and like other similar things. Um, I actually just got these like accents. Um, so I actually didn't get the Crimson Cadet base kit. Um, I... Why did I not get it? Oh, I was actually just out of money. Um, and I figured I liked the symbols a lot. So I was like, hey, a red, red accents can go with so many different things, right? So I was like, hey, why not? And so I got the red accents. Um, I mean the symbols kit. Because uh, it kind of can go with like a bunch of different things. Um, so yeah. Um, God, that car. Anyway, and we have some grapefruit haichu, which I'm just going to eat now. That's the keyboard on the desk. Just do exclamation keyboard. I'm outside your house. Okay, stay there, um, Singapore. Okay. So we got two artisan keycaps today. We got a yellow Earl Escape by Hungerwork Studio. And then we got a new keycap by um what is what's the maker name? His name is Bot Bot Duck or Mother Duck on Mech Market. But he's been he just started selling keycaps. Um let me see what's his uh what's his maker name? Quality? Oh uh, yeah, no, these are um these are really nice. Um looks like it was made using the I think it's the synth based on the profile. It's per it's like cherry profile from what I can see. And Everything about it looks super clean, so I'm not sure if you'll focus here. Okay. Yeah, so look at that. It's it's super clean. Like the lines are super crisp. And like the texture is really nice and sharp and detailed. Like it's it they did a really good job of detailing the thickness, like kinda like the little dip over here. Uh, with his duck feet. Um, so pretty cute in my opinion and overall I'm pretty satisfied but yeah I forget their uh, maker name I I uh, I'm 
not sure. <laughs> I apologize. Duck's Nest Caps. Oh, that's what the maker name is. Duck's Nest. Duck's Nest. Could, could put that on a duck board? I could. I could. Anyway, so two little Arzens. I have some more stickers from Monoke. And oh, look at that. I got a nightcap from the Alice in Wonderland themed uh, sale just recently. This is mod this is made after the the Matt Hatter. So this is the Matt Hatter from Alice in the Wonderland. Um that's so sick, right? Back left hand. <laughs> um, year end the uh, my Christmas kit came in. Uh, just a symbols kit. Uh, that's all I got. And then finally, I got a. Um, how do I open this? Oh yeah. Ah, let's get some scissors. Got some Pinocos. Oh no, I opened the back from the underside. Oh well, it's fine. Um, so I got some Pinocos in. Actually, it's like perfectly switch sized, <laughs> the hole. So that's perfect. Grandma Man Hatter. <laughs> they sound pretty, uh, pretty smooth. Um, these are Pinocos uh, made. Uh, they're designed by um, Okonomiyaki from Singapore. Uh, she uh, did these uh, pink translucent housings. Uh, Car honking stop. Yeah, thank, thank goodness. Um, pretty smooth. Uh, they kind of just sound like any other JWK linear to me. So I'm excited to build with these though because the color is so cute. Um, so I will probably build with these some other time. I need to, I probably want to loop this stuff. Anyway. So that's the mail for, um, today. Uh, they actually all arrived today because, um, my international mail's been pretty backed up lately. Uh, it's been a bit of a mess actually. Like... Like they've been in the international like um, distribute um I guess like arrival centers for like weeks for some stuff. It's been rather annoying, but it is what it is, especially given the times. Um, anyhow, so let's get to the build, shall we? Because people arrived and I feel like I should have. So we first got some caps that they wanted to use, it looks like. Um, got my switches. Stabilizers. Oh, yo, UB. Hey. Welcome back for nine months. Are these switches just with normal linear spring or something special? Yeah, I think just normal linear springs, um, 10 peaches for the Pinocos. And Thor, um, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub. Um, and then, so, um, we have just the PCB here because I had to modify it. Um, so, okay, so matrix boards are a bit more complicated than your usual build, and I'll have to explain exactly why. But basically, um, okay, I, I'll just take it out and explain. What's the 2.2 PCB thickness? Good question. I have not measured it. Um, but yeah, so basically, before 
like for the 8x v 2.0 and 2.2 builds the the process is a bit more convoluted because of the cable situation um, so they both use a fixed cable and you also need to use this like cable holding bracket that they have and so I have those over here I'll just show it to him in just a second in the meantime let me uh let me see what's the thickness of this um I'm gonna guess it's one point um, um actually I have some calipers over here uh, hold up where's my where's my calipers all right uh, normal 1.6 I think it's a little thinner than 1.6 actually um, 2.0 ADD is 1.3 hmm. okay um, looks like actually it looks like this is just one point uh, wait hold up I need to just uh, take the right place and also yeah it looks like it's 1.5 1 1.5 ish it does not in I did not see any spacers but I'll double check yeah 1.4 it looks like 1.4 yeah it's not focusing because but yeah you can see it's like 1.4 um, which makes me wonder uh, if I have spacers for it anyway uh, so let me explain this cable situation here so this PCB over here uh, first of all um, the 8x uh, v2.0 series requires this small daughter board uh, the old one specifically uh, which when plugged in this is an RGB LED um, and basically you need this circuitry in order for the PCB to work so come on why is, why is it not focusing uh, there we go. Um, so if you don't have this circuitry uh, properly uh, like done, the PCB won't function. So it's kind of scuffed in that sense. In the sense that like if this breaks, everything breaks. Um, so, so one has to be pretty careful about that. You know, you borg this and you're done for. Um, so anyway, so it's um, all done here. Uh, the, the JST is done here. I, I had a friend help me out with it. Um, but anyway, so that's the first part of the PCB situation. The second part is that I had a cable made through a friend of mine who helped me crimp this and stuff. Um, but basically, this is for the JST connector and this part, this brass piece here is going to go into the case. It's going to screw onto the case and it's going to come out through a hole like this hole basically and this part is going to connect to my USB cable which is also custom made which is like this so this USB cable is pretty nice it's a rubber uh, cable with a Yarbo USB A connector and a YC8 um, termination so it's basically the cable is custom made for the board for this board um, yeah so fancy right fancy stuff okay so let's unbox this guy all right rubber feels good yeah rubber is nice So, you know, just Matrix lab since 2015. Uh, bunch of screws. Uh, so this, th these pieces are for the little RGB eye. More screws. And then we have our bump on feet, some stickers. And then here we have our case. Can you order these cables? Uh, 
you maybe could if you find a maker who does them, but that I know, no. I had a friend of mine help me out um, with the cable situation, uh, which meant that I, ha I like sent him some like the parts to help, like for him to like help me out with some of the soldering and stuff. Especially because the JST termination needs crimping. You need to put crimps on it. Um, anyway, so it's a silver. Matrix 2.2 today with a green aluminum plate. It's more like a teal, I guess. More like sea foam. Turquoise, I guess turquoise is the right word for it. <clears throat> teal and silver? Yes, teal and silver. Very nice. Okay, so. I guess the first thing I should honestly do is test this guy, but I'll I'll undo the case to show you guys what this whole thing is about. It's it's a finicky process. You don't want to mess it up. <laughs> if I mess up today, it's gonna be bad. Cause that I know of, I don't know of, I don't know where to get PCB replacements. So. No mess ups allowed today. Um, so I, I took every precaution possible so that there would be no mess ups. Um, so first step, just to test. I already tested it before, but I just want to show you that it works. So step one, in my case here, just plug in my I wonder why more TKL builds don't have symmetrical R1. Symmetrical by R1, are you referring to the bottom row? Because some people refer to R1 as the bottom, some people refer to R1 as the top, depending on whether you're using cherry or something else. Mm, let's align these guys. Looks like it goes like. That. Anyway, so I just want to test this cable, test that the PCB works, and that's all I'm gonna do. Um, and then we're gonna unplug it, and we're gonna just go ahead with the rest of the build. Oh, okay, that's great news. All right, um, so you know, PCB lights up, which means that's a good sign. Um, and I can just quickly show you that um, if I show you like switch hitter here, um, like I can just test a few a few keys here, escape, like up arrow, like uh, enter, or you know, a few of these keys, and I just want to show you that it's working. Um, yeah. So anyway, so. I already tested the whole thing, so I don't need to do this entire thing. We can skip this whole part. Um, so just gonna carefully um, unplug this. So this is just a push-pull connector, so it's pretty easy to unplug. Anyway, um, so put this away for now. And also gonna unplug it from here because the weight is gonna tilt things over very easily otherwise and I definitely don't want that so just put that away for a second place the PCB away for a second all right now that the PCB is out of the way I feel better Let's, let me show you the internals of this case. So let's close this and so, oh, come on. Why is, why is that showing up? There we go. All right, um, Silji, hello. Um, so this is the silver matrix, has this red badge on the bottom. Aluminum badge has some brass pieces. 
As you can tell, the brass piece that is on the cable connector here is going to come out here. Oopsie. And, um, and there, and that's basically what it is. That's where the cable is going to come out. These are just bump on locations and the rest is just currently screwed down. Um, I'm going to show you how it's all screwed down. So 2.0 back over 2.2 back. I mean, 2.0, I think in general is better than 2.2 because I also don't like the 0.625 blockers. Um, so first step is you got to take these out. Gotta take these out. So basically you're gonna undo, you would undo this back weight piece first because you need to access all of the screws, right? So you can just take that out, put it aside for now. And now you have access to all of the case uh, screws. I think this is gonna be quite a bigger one. Um, so just undo these. All right, some chonky bump on cutouts. Yeah, it's like uh, some people call them the MacBook bump ons because the MacBook also has these wide and very flat um, bump ons for them. So some people call it the MacBook style bump ons. Um, but I mean, maybe it's a way for Matrix to make a like fashion statement in a way where they are saying look we do macbook quality uh like you know products maybe i don't know uh, it looks like one of the screws is still not fully unscrewed okay so anyway so you unscrew the eight um case screws and so okay if this were currently assembled if you get uh, an assembled 8x v 2.2 or 2.0 you did your undid your screws first thing because this fixed cable is connected here and like if you undo this like and like take it out it you're gonna tear stuff out um so you have to make sure it's no easy, easy, no easy electronic replacements actually Apple quality. That is very true. Uh, so basically, you have to open it carefully, and you would reach in and disconnect the cable. Number one thing you want to do. Um, but in this case, we don't have a cable connected, so it's fine. Um, but basically, when it's assembled, you don't want to just open up the case and like separate the bottom and the top piece. Um, you would probably tear something. You would tear that JSC connector out um, on the on the PCB. So anyway, you're you're careful with that, and you basically just have the bottom piece then here now. So the bottom piece, as you can see, it has a two-piece weight here, where it has this like nameplate and the brass piece, and then the same thing with the um, this part. It's a brass piece with an accent uh, that's made out of aluminum in this case. Um, and then the rest is pretty simple. Um, it's just gonna be a, a plate, it's top mounted plate. Um, so we came for the plate. So we are gonna undo the plate. Yo, 21 Solo, hello. Hello, hello. The color on that plate is so nice. I agree. I am I'm, I'm I am a big fan of this seafoam colored plate. Hello. 
Looking nice. Thank you, thank you. Leva, hello. Is there an LED cutout for the... Is there an LED cutout below the nav cluster? Uh, right here. That's your LED. That's gonna be our circular um, LED. The, what people sometimes also call the, the Iron Man RGB LED or, you know, arc reactor or, you know, you could call it whatever you want. Circular LED, ring LED. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the ring LED is gonna go there. Um, but yeah does it indicate anything or does it just stay on uh it just looks so it stays on you can also turn it off but yeah it normally pretty much just stays on and stuff nothing too uh complicated yeah it's just just for looks anyhow so we have undone the plate. So the plate just comes off. Pretty normal. Top mount. Top mount plate with nice little relief cuts. Uh, this this part here for the whole uh, PCB little daughter daughter board PCB to go. Um, fixed cutouts for the stabilizers here. Um, ISO cutout here. Is it ISO? Yeah. I think that should allow ISO. Uh, and then bottom row is basically gonna be just enough for the for the 2.2 bottom row. I bet you could get it to do something with QMK and just wait a second. <laughs> yeah, so Funzi is correct. The 2.2 uh, does not have QMK support. Um, the the V the, er, the early V 2.0s and 2.2 are like basically the PCB cannot be reprogrammed. It's pre-programmed and that's all you get. When you said Arc Reactor, you reminded me of the LZ Iron. Yeah. I've been interested in Matrix Wars, but I know nothing about them. Well, welcome. Supreme, hello. How are you doing? Oh, Supreme. I, I, I posted your... Uh, I posted uh, the KBD 8X just now, and I think I saw a comment from Beast Romy saying, like, lightning challenging the mods here on custom keyboards. I feel bad now. Anyway, so that's basically what it is. Um, the little arc reactor thing is gonna go here later on but that we will get to that much later so let's put the case away for now rs build stream when when whenever rs is in my hands if i get an rs then we will do an rs build rs so lit not lit enough <laughs> Yeah, not lit enough. Um, anyway, uh, so... Stabs. Yo, what's RS? It's the liddiest, the most liddy, the dink, the dink liddy, hot liddy, keyboard. The best. The most lit keyboard in the West. Stop. <laughs> Even Sam said it was very lit. If you don't know who Sam is, it's not Uncle Sam. It's not your average Sam. It's Yutsi Sam. <gasps> um, anyway, yeah. You picking up a cyberboard? Good question. I think it looks so crazy. Like, kind of like, uh, 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 like, it kind of makes me feel tempted to grab one just for. For shits and giggles, but probably not. No, it's just not my thing. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I don't like the Cyber Truck by Tesla. <laughs> so, it's too, so, so for starters, it's just not for me. Like, it, it's just not my aesthetic. Um, but yeah, I mean, I know some people are all about that weird, quirky stuff. So, like the HB, the Gray Studio board. That one's all kind of unique. Um, some people love it, so it's a bit much. I agree. Apparently, it's already in production. 
Um, apparently they pre-produced all of the units. Uh, I mean, a lot of the units. So basically, um, it, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's supposed to fulfill like in October apparently, which is pretty crazy if you think about it. Yeah, it's pre-order, not a group buy. Yeah. Did you make the cable yourself, Ten Peaches? Um, I asked a friend to help me out. Uh, I made the suggestions and that was helped out because I don't have the tools. I actually don't have, uh, excuse me, don't have a decent crimp for the cable. Um, yeah, so I asked a friend to do it. Um, he was very generous in helping me out. Um, yeah. So, I'm out of the loop on any of these things. I've heard but I have no idea where RS comes from. There's not much to worry about. Uh, maybe you'll see it out there at some point. Um, already searching for my next board for you to build out. Thank you, thank you. Let me see. Watch our review on it. LED panel at the back is not programmable in the Cyberboard Proto, but it should be programmable on the real board, correct? Yeah, I don't know. Um... Lightning, I have a 1.2 OG and a 2.0 now. Now I need a 2.2 super pump that you are building one. Thank you, thank you. Um, hold up. I was gonna... I was asking... Oh, yeah. Uh, I got band-aids today, so is this an indication that I should do band-aid mod? I'm not a huge fan of it anymore, but I'll keep it for now to the side. I got some 2.5 grade 0 here. Cool. That's good. Means I can just use this one. No band-aid mod. Band-aid mod is only relevant for silent builds. I do agree with that. Sealed for my protection. Um, 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 um. What board do you have in front of you? Uh, the board in front of me, just to exclamation keyboard, it's a uh, gasket double O in polycarbonate. It's kind of a private unit. Um, what stabs are those? These are Duroc stabs. These are Duroc stabilizers. Um, I know that Prime KB is now selling a. Um, so if you go onto primekb.com slash lightning, Prime KB is selling the black, uh, smoky black uh, Duroc stabilizers. No, they should have more kits soon. Anyway, um. Maybe the client just wants to make sure you have band-aids in, ca in case you accidentally <laughs> stab yourself with switch bands. <laughs> Yo. When do you get poly? What the heck? I, I had it like for a while now. I, I even... I'm pretty sure you knew this. Invisibility. But I suppose you didn't now. Or you forgot. Probably. Wildcat, Teha types, Te keyboards all have the cyberboard to review. There should be more information available soon. Oh, that's cool. Um, that's very nice. I mean, the cyberboard looks interesting. Like, I think the if the back, the if the whole LED thing is programmable and stuff, I think it could be like a cool, <laughs> it's a cool like display piece. I think. I just can't imagine my desk with it because it's so freaking big. That's what she said. Um, like, it's just, I don't know, it's just too chunky. <laughs> I need a bigger desk. 
Um, so actually, as of late, I've been debating getting an upgrade for my desk. I wanted to get a, um, you either love it or hate it. I don't hate it, but I don't love it. I actually don't love it or hate it. I like the idea of it. I actually think RGB is cool and fun. The design is loud and too, like very big for me. Um, it, it, it just, it's impractical for me rather. That's what I should say. It's impractical. If I had a very large desk and a lot of display space, I would totally put one there. It's one chonky boy. Yeah, I agree. Hey, Milk Manu, hello. How are you doing? I'm good, how are you? Um, I could be doing better, to be honest, but uh, I'm doing okay. Um, I'm doing okay given, given that I think I could have had a better day today. You know, living life. Hanging in there. I know it, yeah. Okay, well, I just got a message from the client saying they want a Band-Aid mod, so Band-Aid mod it is. I mean, so the Band-Aid mod is not far, like, it's not a bad thing either. In Especially in this case, because it is a little bit thinner, it actually might help uh, because uh, it's not a standard thickness PCB. And I know that uh, Matrix 2.0s come with uh, little spacers for the for the PCBs for the stabilizers to be specific. Um, so it's kind of like along those same lines. Looks like a Matrix plate. Yes, it is. It's an Matrix V 2.2. Stabs am I using? I'm using Duroc stabs. Duroc stabilizers. Just clear Duroc stabilizers. Duroc in mine as well. I can already smell the sound test. <laughs> Right there on the desk. How did I miss that? I mean, you could you could think they're zeal stabs. Uh, I think that's like a fair assessment, right? You could think they're zeal stabs. Oh wait a second. Why is that? Sorry. If you guys hear a Discord notification, that's my fault. Uh, hold up. Okay, I think we should be good now. Sorry about that. Um, they look just like the zeal stabs. Yeah, they they pretty much they pretty much are the same. <laughs> like they really are not very different at all. From like what the comparisons that people have done, they basically are like yeah, they're the same thing. Except I guess cheaper. Like I think a set of Durog stabs costs you like seventeen dollars plus shipping and tax, whereas um, zeal stabs are gonna be closer to like thirty. Thought I was getting popular. <laughs> yeah, I keep looking at my Discord. I'm so sorry. That's my fault. It's probably like a ping from some random server I'm in. Um, and also because uh, normally, like um, when you're on OBS, um, the streamer mode uh, turns on the on Twitch. I mean on Discord, which basically uh, silences all of your notifications. Um, but I 
turned it off earlier and it doesn't turn on automatically, so you have to do it manually. So I forgot to do that just earlier. Waiting for the C3 stab restock. Do people like C3 stabs more? I personally have been liking the Jurok stabs quite a bit. Probably should add Jurok stabs with Band-Aid mod to it. Not sure if I can even edit build command on mobile. i actually not sure if you can. I will have to check the permissions for that. I'm sorry. Um, uh... Yeah, I could add that. I personally don't like to add the stab info because it's just too much. It's like kind of intuitive. But if people really need to know, then I'll, I'll just start adding it myself every time. Sometimes I actually don't know what stabs I'm gonna use until I open the package. So yeah. Uh, can you bat? Can you buy stab spacers anywhere? Um. No, I don't think so. Uh, I mean, like, I know that Heinebush has some with, like, the... Oh, is it Heinebush? No, hold on. Heinebush has some for his thinner PCBs. Uh, but I know that AIO3 also made spacers for Polaris. So there's possibility that those are open source and you could basically get a bunch made. Um, the faded interaction. Hey man, how are you doing? How goes the stream? The stream goes well. Um, I'm okay. I could be doing better, as I said earlier, but doing all right. Living, living life. You know, busy. It's been busy. I, I have to be honest. I I actually wanted to do this stream, the one right now. I wanted to do this in the middle of the week, and I wanted to do something else today. But I've just been too busy. Um, there's, I, I, I am just expecting to be busy until the end of the month at least. Um, so, like first week of September actually, I'm expecting to be pretty busy. So normally I'll try to stream more because I have, I do have builds to do. But yeah, it's just been hectic. The main problem I come, I come across Jurok stab is play tolerance a few. I have issues with a few acrylic plates. Oh, I see. Didn't know that. Also, I feel like acrylic builds are a bit of a different story because you're, you're supposed to stack pieces and while you're doing that, there is basically variability um, in every single piece you add on top. So if it's off even by a little, uh, yeah, you could be messing with the tolerances on things. Hey, yo, what up? Uh, Lux Cables, hello, hello. Um, C3 got better compared to initial rounds, which had problems with EPBT. Yeah, I heard something like had uh, round one C3 stabs had problems with all PBT keycaps in general, like Hammer, CRP, BSP, like EPBT, whatever, OG Cherry, um, you name it. Um, yeah. Would I 3D print them or what? No, no, no. So the state, so the spacers at Heinebush or um, you could 3D print them. Yeah, you could for spacers you can use a material. Uh, but I believe they make them in piece uh, in PCB material, which is FR4. So you could basically just make a bunch from like a PCB manufacturer. It would be pretty cheap because PCBs are cheap in general. To make. Um, C3 and better in terms of play tolerance. Cup, always keep a couple of cherry clip ins just in case. I mean, I still use a bunch of cherry screw ins, so. And I know that people have problems with screw ins, but I just stick with it anyway. I'm like, you know, it's the. People say, like, oh, it's so scratchy and whatever. I don't really think it's that bad. So I just use them anyway. And it really isn't that bad, I mean, 
like I've compared builds and I, I actually have cherry screw in stabs on pretty much like 90% of my builds, maybe more. So yeah, I like my own builds. Just gotta be a little bit more liberal about lube maybe. And just uh, know how to fit, fit uh, fiddle around with uh, with the with the wire situation. It's not too bad though. Um, pay got slashed in half due to you know the whole freaking pandemic. Oh man, I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah, yeah, it's been whack. That's for sure. It's been it's been whack. Left shift, spacebar, right shift, oh, enter, you see. So we still gotta do more. Um, yeah, um, life's been pretty weird, that's for sure. Um, speaking of staffs, any thoughts about whether I should be using mil max sockets? Would increase the probability of stab wires popping out? I've seen this a few times with Durox staffs. Um, hmm. Stab wires popping out due to mil max maybe actually um i could see it happening if the switch in the middle pops off before any of the other parts of the stabilized stem so like the two on the you know on the one on the left and the one on the right if the middle comes off first and you you keep pulling up then yeah you could pop the stab wire because of the force because you're applying too much force and it's not off yet. So yeah, I could see a problem with that. Uh, I wouldn't think it's a for sure thing though. Like I would say it's based on how you manipulate yourself. If you're careful, then no. If you're not, then yes. Um, fiberglass, FR4, Uh, need to get some click bins for ogre actually you need to not sleep on that oh yeah man clip ins uh i need to get clip ins too i guess i think i should have some but like a handful maybe but i honestly don't even know how many clip ins i have i mean if i don't have any then i'll i'll have to look into it do people even stock clip ins nowadays i feel like i don't even see them much they really aren't that bad at all. I don't understand where the hate comes from. I assume you're talking about the um, cherry stabs. Yeah. I mean, no, I mean, I understand the hate, quote unquote, for cherry stabs. They are bad in the sense that the wire tolerances get worse as the wire gets longer. So the longer the wire, the worse, like, the worse your chances will be that you will have to fiddle around with the stabs so that there is no friction or um, like binding uh, because of the wire touching the walls or the tip of the wire touching the back end of the stab, etc. Um, there's several issues with that because basically what happened was that Cherry revised their dimensions for the entry point of the wire in these inserts i mean no not in the inserts my bad not the inserts are not changed actually the inserts are the same uh on the housing of the of the stabilizers so the housings of the stabilizers have a narrower entry way basically like the doorway and that causes the wire to bind more easily because um because basically they changed that but they did not change anything about the wire meaning that tighter tolerances on the entry part but the same on the wires so basically you're making it worse overall for wires and the error right the percent error goes up as the wire gets longer that's just like a manufacturing thing right like the bigger the thing the higher the chances that you'll get it wrong by a small amount but that small amount matters when you have a tighter space does that make sense Clip-ins, PCV mount, screw-ins are also PCV mount if you say that. Let's see. I'm seeing it during usage, not during keycap installation or removal. Hmm. Weird. 
My community beginners have been asking for help to fix their stabs because the wires pop. They they didn't build their own board, so they don't know how to fix it. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah, um, a tutorial on that is advisable. Um, personally, I, I mean, if people wanted to really ask me that question, I could answer it. I basically just use tweezers and use leverage to pop it back in. That's all you really need to do. You just need to be a little bit dexterous with uh, tweezers and just like jam them in there and pop it right back in. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm sure that newbies would be afraid to do that because they are afraid that they're gonna scratch something, they're gonna mess something up. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, the reason you use clip-ins for um, things that have a rubber o-ring gasket around the assembly is because the screw-in stabilizers tend to have a bigger footprint. Like the physical footprint is bigger due to the screw. Um, evening, Visioneer, hello. Cherry stabs, clip, loop, band-aid mod, and sometimes Teflon grease, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Teflon grease, dielectric grease, like people. But, I mean, that's basically what we use, like PTFE based stuff, polymer stuff. Just high quality stuff, I guess. The stuff we use, like Crytox, is like used for like vacuum and like medical applications. Um, let's see. Still waiting for new stab options. I mean, I've been okay with the idea of having. I mean, the the Durock stabs. I've been okay with them personally. I haven't had really issues because you can always be careful about the wires popping. And the only issues I've had for wire popping are for um, installation and uh, removal of keycaps. And you can always pop them back in if you're again if you're dexterous enough with some tweezers or like some narrow narrow tool that you can use as uh, use for leverage. Yeah. Um, C3 stabs are beginner friendly. It is a really high hill that makes it super hard to pop out. Yeah, I heard it's uh, like pretty tight for them. Um, interesting, from what I hear, cherry wires plus Duroc housings are a good combo. That would. Um... Wait, cherry wires and Duroc housings? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's fine because, again, the wires did not change, but the housings did. So using Duroc housings is like going back to normal cherry housings, right? Like it's the length of wires is not gonna change because like 7U is 7U, 6.25U is 6.25U and so on. Like that's not gonna change no matter what, right? So that's um, probably why that works. Heard about this, didn't know about the cherry wires. Yeah, haven't had a single wire pop with Duroc. Um, me, uh, I've had a couple of wire pop thing, but like it was e really, really easy to, to, to put it back. Um, so basically, no real issues, like nothing to the point where it's like, oh my god, this is unusable, I can't stand it. I remember I had V1 zeal stabs that did that and i was just like you know i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm desoldering this entire build and just redoing it with what the f hold up this uh i have an insert here that uh has the <laughs> like it's blocked because of the okay <laughs> what the hell <clears throat> I guess it didn't demold properly but it's like blocked so I just need to take out the little piece of plastic here there we go okay it's out just a little flap of plastic here Okay. 
um, had to pop on me before the build was even finished. Oh, I see, like during testing, your stabs. Um, do you hear about those country croc butter? What? What? Country what? What? I have no idea what you're talking about. Cohen Romer says he uses zeal wires with cherry housings. Okay. I mean, that's basically a gold wire and that's about it, right? That's the only difference, I think. I, I don't really see the difference. Like, I don't see how that would be different. Unless, like, the wires were actually very different. But I don't really think they are. I had a big problem using Jurok in my SAT 75. I haven't had the issue in any other build. Let me see. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just exceptions, small exceptions to the rule, right? Had a big problem. I mean, no. when in doubt, pull out some tweezers. Yes. Tweezers are your friend. I mean, just small tools, like keeping some, some smaller tools handy in your toolbox, always in your toolkit. It's always a resourceful thing to have you just never know things get stuck we have we, we do use smaller parts in general so frankenstein stabs do i try it i mean not if you don't need to i personally don't really do it because i don't feel the need to are you using the lucky dark smoky housing no i'm not these are just regular just clear housings Unless you, that was not a question for me. I think Apiary's advice is pretty good. Don't put lube to the bend on the wire. Hmm. Oh, I see, because it... F. It could... Oh, 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 nothing got smudged on it. Oh, great. Um, because it could pop out more easily if you have lube on the... on the bend. I could see why. I could see why she advises that. Jesus Christ. So... There's these kids that live upstairs, and good lord, I don't even, I don't know if it's like their living room right above me or something, but they're always like stomping on the ground, or like bouncing like a basketball, and it always seems to happen either like in the middle of the day, or like at night, and it's definitely kids. Hi, I'm late. What color? 2.2 silver and teal plates. I can hear the mic shaking or whatever from their jumping. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I think it's, I think they like balance like a basketball kind of thing. I can hear them running around because it's I can hear it like going zoom like towards like my living room area like living area <laughs> and then like back and then um, and then I'm like oh I see they're running around this time um, what's up Pirolito hello Pirolito have you gotten your lube yet uh the the one the, the stuff I sent from the time I sent some lube I had it sent to you over in Mexico. Hopefully it's arrived by now, but maybe not. I hope so. Fudge them kids. Time to spend them. <laughs> uh, I mean, 
I neither like nor dislike kids actually. I I feel like some of them can be like the devil, but like manifestations of of a devil, but otherwise sometimes I just feel like they're super adorable and super nice. I don't know. Kids are hit or miss, honestly. Mostly depends on the parents, I feel though. They take after them. Not yet. Aduanas in Mexico is very bad. Yeah. Aduanas is uh, customs. For those who are unaware of what that means. It's customs. Yeah. Bratty kids are the worst. For sure. Bratty kids. Yeah, yeah. Especially like, I feel like they're particularly bad between like, uh, hmm. It's like six and like from six to like nine years old, I think they're pretty bad, because they're like super egotistic and like they really don't care. They 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 don't give a shit. It's all about them. <laughs> Diablo kids, yeah, seriously. <sighs> Manifestations of the devil. <laughs> They <laughs> devil or angel, in no in betweens. Yeah, that's correct. No, no in betweens for kids. They're really yeah. Oh god. I mean yeah. Not like I'm planning to have any kids anytime soon, but oh man, it's so funny. I have friends with kids, obviously, right? And like I'm just like, I hear them complain sometimes. I'm just like, oh, it's good for you. It's like. I'm not missing out on anything. I'm not against them though. Uh, so I'm pretty sure that it's uh, 6.25 U. Uh, wait, hold up. No, 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 no. Hold up. What's the plate? I mean, here's the plate. What's the PC for? Um, someone remind me. Um. Mm, 2.2 uses a 7U spacebar or a 6.25U spacebar? Is there a reason why I use Crytox instead of dielectric degrees on my stab wires? Because I just like to stick to one of them. Um, I mean, it's just preference. It's just my preference. Like, I prefer to use. Um, Uh, cry talks. I found better. I found I've like I've had a better experiences with cry talks. Yep, six point two five. Yep, six two five. I'm guessing here now. You're not. I'm. You're right. You're right. You're actually right. It is six point two five. But yeah, it's a, it's a preference. Some people prefer dielectric degrees because, first of all, there's several reasons why someone would advocate for dielectric degrees. Uh, I'll give a few reasons why I could logically see that. One, dielectric degrees is actually thicker and more viscous than Crytox 205 grade zero in this case. So if you add a lot, like add, add a decent amount of dielectric degrees, your wire is not gonna rattle. Like it's not gonna really move in that slot. So, chances of it rattling are actually smaller when you're using the electric grease, if you use enough of it. But, the con of that, the disadvantage, is obviously that if it's too viscous, you can make sticky stabs. So, that would not be good. Um, other, other things I could see, the electric grease is way cheaper. Way, 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 way cheaper. Um, Compared to Crytox, Crytox is super expensive. It's like basically at the rate we buy Crytox, we pay about two dollars per milliliter of Crytox ish because I think we pay like seven dollars for like three mils nowadays, which yeah makes it very expensive. Um, so Crytox is super expensive. Um, so that's a very good reason why you could use dielectric grease so that you basically minimize the amount of Crytox you use. Yeah, those two reasons particularly. But um, yeah, but I mean, I personally found like that smoothness-wise, 
and just overall like usage and like longevity and just like many different factors I preferred 205 like I haven't had issues with them if I had any issues that would deter me from using them uh, from using a 205 I would yeah I would switch it up but I haven't had any instances of like terrible issues like you know deal breaker issues that have made me uh, choose something else like a different material yep so that's basically why I heard dielectric grease last longer than 205 grade zero mm, I could see uh, like the movement of the stab pushing out some of the lube out especially crytox because it is less viscous so I could see why that argument is made um, if it's whether it's factually true I do not know My stabs have a weird sticky clicky noise. Any idea what that could be? Um, either too little lube or your keycaps bent or or it's just yeah, it's just good old rattle probably. Probably good old rattle. Okay, so stabs are done. So let's um we need to get some um, um, um I was asked to do a uh, band-aid mod. Uh, so we're gonna do a band-aid mod tonight. Tonight is a band-aid mod kind of night. Warp wires too? Whoa, warp wires where? On Durox tabs? Do you see warp wires here? I mean, it is 2020 and we still don't have good stabs. Oh, warp wires equals rattle. Yes, absolutely. Warp wires will be a very big, like a primary cause for, for rattle. A nice and not so expensive macro pad. Hmm. A nice and not so expensive macro pad. There's a few, right? Uh, what is that? P pretty sure I've seen some cheap macro pads. I just don't know. Anything QMK compatible would be nice. Um, I, what was that? What was that nine key macro pad that I saw before? Do you guys remember what that is? There's an 8x8 eight eight macro pad I see, that's too big. I just ordered a BDN9, yeah yeah, BDN9 macro pad should be good from keep.io. That's a good one I think. YMD8, yeah, I think I've heard of that one too. Anything that's programmable is good for a macro pad, basically. I wouldn't really, I mean, if, if the look of it is okay with you and it's programmable, that's all you need. That's all you need, my friends. I've heard that athletic tape works better than band-aids. Gonna try it on my next build. Um, I could see why people argue that. Um, so I think it's... Uh, so for a while people used to, I mean, included me, included myself. Um, I used to, like, people used to, like, apply some lube onto the band-aid, which makes it soggy. Which obviously is a bad idea in retrospect. 
Um, but yeah, people used to do that, so obviously it was soggy and disgusting. But, I mean... Yo, Cozy Fanny Tutti, hello. Thank you so much for the tier one sub, welcome. I actually um, just recently got a um, discipline uh, kit from you. I actually opened it up today just to check out. Um, I, I'm gonna build it for a client um, sometime soon in the future. This, uh, I actually I'm waiting for a case by um, SM Keyboards. That's basically what I'm waiting for. I just remembered. Nice. Hope I can be there to check it out. I hope so too. I hope you can join us. The new Tehalu video. Oh uh, yeah. Not gonna happen anytime soon. I mean, not yet. He's still just moving into his new studio. It's gonna be a little while. You should loop your. P <laughs> you should loop your PCV. Bandit mod been a hot minute since I've seen that. Yeah, you know, right? It's, um, I I've I've done it fairly recently though. I've actually done it for a different client who asked for it. Um, it was actually an off-stream build. Now that I remember, it's been a while though. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely not frequent anymore. So I looped my limo connectors. <laughs> I mean, looping metallic parts so that they you know they work. Well, like, because they do, like, rotate or, like, you know, glide a lot or whatever. Sure, that's fine. <laughs> oh, man. Do you have any, um, let's see, did I miss anything? No. Um, do you hear about the extras for Iron 165? I hope it's true and I'm able to get one. Um, yeah, uh, yes, 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 I have heard about, uh, Iron 165 extras will be up on Cannon Keys in the near future. They are still preparing a few things before then. Um, so stay tuned. I will post about Iron 165 extras once I have more news from Upas. But until then, uh, but they will happen. They definitely, there definitely will be some Iron 165 extras on Cannon Keys. Uh, but yeah, not yet. Not yet. Um, do you have any interest in producing YouTube keyboard content like reviews, guides, etc.? Um, I'll be honest, Kimchi Jody Boy, I would. I think it would be cool, but I, I... There's three problems. Number one, I have no experience with videography. Zero. At all. Nothing. No Windows Movie Maker. Nothing. I have, like, zero editing experience. I've never in my life edited a video. Period. Never. I've, not, I've never touched sound levels. I've never touched lighting. I've never white balanced a video. Nothing. Well, aside from on the camera itself, I've done, like, live streaming like webcasting for like like sports events and things like that but I've never done post pro video editing at all ever none of my typing tests are actually edited either they're just cropped they're not edited though like they're not I don't edit the sound I don't edit anything about them I don't know how to do it um there's that one reason <laughs> so that's a big one there's a big uh learning curve um second reason I wouldn't I, I, I'm not doing it uh, is because I um, don't have time. I don't have enough time to do it. Um, I, I lack, I, I just lack the commitment to do it. And finally, I don't think, I don't know 
what I could contribute YouTube like video content wise it's such a competitive sort of area in a way because your content has to stand out and at the same time be informative attract a certain audience and maintain that audience in such a way that you, there is a style to your process that there is a like a continuity to it like people look at it and they're like oh that is a lightning xi production video or something like that um but i don't think i have the creative elements for that um or the ideas right now that I feel like comfortable saying like, oh yeah, I would, I, I think I want to do that. Yeah. So that's my three reasons. It doesn't have to be informative. You could go meme comedy route too. <laughs> if I were that funny, I would do it, but I don't, I don't think I'm that funny. Do you think I'm funny? Um, Tempest, hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh yeah, it is afternoon over there, huh? Six point two five. I I would participate in other people's videos, like I would be a guest. I can contribute my opinions. I can be interviewed. I can provide. I, I just. I, I cannot be self-responsible for the production elements. That's basically what worries me. Uh, yeah, actually, if I had the skills, if I had the skills to edit, if I knew how to edit, if I knew how to make things quickly and easily, I would definitely do it. Yeah, like thinking about it, yeah, like I would do it, I would do it if I had the skills. Like even if it's boring content, quote unquote, like even if it's uninteresting and just informative and very technical, I actually am really into technical videos. Like I like documentaries. I like, I like stuff that tells me like, like you know, like all the little like nerdy things that you want to know about a material or how to make something and tutorials and that kind of stuff. I like that stuff. I like watching that stuff. I, I don't know at all how to structure and make one. <laughs> But I mean, like, like if I had the ability to do it, I think I would try it. I think I would try try to do it. But yeah, at this point, like this, at my like, where I am in life, I guess right now, um, it, it's very very hard to justify the time for me to learn this whole skill set and to excel at it. You know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I feel like if I had a someone who produced. The videos and I were to participate in the brainstorming and execution of like you know being filmed or providing some sort of asset I would do it why not there are a lot of things you can do like something you can do is build guys for certain boards like this <laughs> I know there are a lot of people that like to watch ASMR built videos uh, Wildcat is evidence of that that is true. Um, yeah, I mean, you you, sh you guys surely know by now, but the reason I do build streams is because I enjoy talking to you guys while I'm building. Like, it's a way to kind of stay awake while I'm doing this, a way to be engaged in what I'm doing. Um, so I enjoy it for that reason. Um, ASMR, that kind of stuff, yeah, I could do it in, like, silence. Like, I've actually done it before. I've actually done the, I've done the, um, like a video, like a, I've done uh, builds, like in complete silence, like in, like with just like one lamp light in my room, just because a client didn't want it on stream and they still wanted to see how I built it. So upon request, I can do that. I can just, I basically just turn on the camera, hit record, and I'll just build it by myself like nothing else like no talking no no music no nothing just just me and the keyboard and the build I, i've done it 
um, and they liked it. Um, I just like you know sent it to them, like put it on Dropbox or whatever, and you know they saw it and they were like, okay, yeah, this is great, this is awesome. I'll, I'll like keep it and I'll you know I'll, I love it. Thank you so much for the build and that was it. Um, yeah, I think you even have the voice for it for ASMR. You're kidding me. You're fucking kidding me. Me, the voice for ASMR. Ooh, I hate my voice. I hate my voice, especially on mic. It's I, oh, it, it, it triggers me. I think everybody does, but I really don't like my voice on on mic. I I I, I only listen to it because I, I have no other choice. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like I've gone to karaoke and stuff, and it's fun, but I think it's different when you're singing versus when you're just talking. I don't really think I have a great voice, though. <laughs> I have your voice as my alarm. <laughs> uh, I'd come to Diego ASMR TVH. Uh, hello, Nathan. Oh my god. Um. <laughs> Um, you do have a lot of knowledge, so maybe you could do some history documentary videos. Uh, you know, I've actually thought about something like that before. Um, I was actually gonna think of asking somebody to like feature me as a guest, and we could just go over like like history elements of the hobby, and that that could be fun. I thought. Um, yeah, I've thought about that before. Um. Agreed though you have to distinguish your production style in order to stand out. Kairos, Kairos Rand's style is different from Mint Release for example and for key content creators specifically it's hard to have the budget to hire an editor. That is correct. Yeah, there's no chance I have the money to hire an editor. Petting a cat or staring at a wall. <laughs> Do one about the Lumina. Hmm, Lumina? What is a Lumina? <laughs> close-ups of when installing things like staffs or inserting switches yeah your voice is cool WTF you guys are just you guys are exaggerating and there's no chance <laughs> you need the proximity effect where we get more of the deep frequencies <laughs> uh, Twitch blocks that. <laughs> yeah, Twitch does block that. Uh, could documentaries all day long? Teha types lightning? I, I, I'll be okay with uh, helping Nathan with productions, actually. I'll be okay with that. I, I've told Nathan that we should do a mukbang ASMR. And we could just be like. Sorry about that. <laughs> Lightning <laughs> <laughs> audiobook when? <laughs> uh, <oof. laughs> oh man, that's uh, crazy. I wonder if Lightning was streaming on his channel instead of Teha, would anyone notice? <laughs> you could be like that guy who came into the chat the other day, uh, the other time I was streaming, and was like, oh, you're such a. Teha Poser! Ah, man. He got banned. So sad. I, I wanted to just leave him. To see what he would say. I'm so sad Max did a mukbang during 12. Yo! Max said he was gonna buy a burger and then he went offline. He was like, be right back! And then, like, never came back. Like, only came back once, like, TKC was up for uh, being a guest, which was lame. Ghost Pepper Mukbang. Oh, yo. I I think Nathan really likes spicy food, but I'm not sure if I can handle that much. <laughs> I can handle some, but I can't handle too much. I can handle like some like hot tteokbokki, but I can't do like, I mean, or like salsa, but I can't do like ghost pepper and like Carolina Reaper and that kind of stuff. It, that, that stuff is, whew, no. I would die. I, I, would, I would be like short of breath. He's doing that to everybody. <laughs> Intermission SMH. I know. Oh man. Uh, 
five, seven, eight. You can't hold it. I mean, I can eat it. I can, I can have, I can have a good amount of uh, chili, like spicy, but I, I just don't like the next day experience, man. Like, my, my rear hurts too much. <laughs> it's too hurtful. <laughs> Yeah, hot peppers, cool, but yeah, it just yeah, it's it's like self torture. Had one reaper one time and thought I was dying. Yeah, me too. I've done it too. Nobody in this world can listen to ja to jazz except for Nathan. Yeah, I know. He's he's father of keyboards, lord of jazz, um, pox streamer. Next day experience, please go into depth. <laughs> Descriptive visual details. I'll just say it's hot, steamy, and um, just hurtful. Very hurtful. Makes me sad. Makes me want to cry. <laughs> what is the hot, hottest pepper you've eaten? Uh, I've had a piece of, uh, uh, what's that called? It's not a, um, it's not ghost pepper. It was something else. I mean, like I've had like chile de árbol, which is pretty spicy. Habanero, habanero is delicious with fish. Oh yeah, habanero is really good. I really like habanero. Um, but yeah, I've had like really spicy chile de árbol, like those like little like they're like spherical sort of, they're, like super tiny and super super spicy. If Krelbit ate a ghost pepper for the community, so can you. If Ryu ate a ghost pepper for, for the community, so can you. No thanks. No thanks. Not for me. Lube it. <laughs> Put it on a piece of toast. <laughs> Chile de Arbol is literally el diablo. Yeah, it's, it's so bad. It's crazy. Is this the Apollo death mat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ever had a habanada? It's habanero with the capsaicin, bread out, so delicious and no heat. Tastes like flowers. I've actually not had that, no. I mean, I know that a lot of um, peppers, a lot of chili, are super delicious with some of the capsaicin out of them. Because the spice masks a lot of the like taste profile that they have. And I've had some good stuff, but I have not had an habanero like an habanero with uh with the with, with the capsaicin bread out no that would be that would be awesome that would be wonderful because i do like habanero sauce in general like i i like the the taste profile of like habanero sauce yo food talk in my channel this is this this is this is true lightning chat Lightning chat has officially evolved when we're just talking about food because I love food. You like the floral taste from some hot peppers <laughs> milk? <laughs> Sorry, I, I totally misread that because that's... So you like the floral taste from some hot peppers, comma, milk? <laughs> but that sounds... Sorry, I, 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 I read that as if it were without punctuation marks, which is how it's written. Hot pepper milk. The chef I work with worked underneath the man behind it, Dan Barber. That's cool. Have you had a Peruvian puff pepper? No, I have not. I work in fine dining AMA. Yo! That's awesome. Are you from Peru? I'm not from Peru. Uh, I'm... I was... I was, uh... I was born and raised in Mexico, if people were ever curious. Um, so yeah, I mean, I grew up with Mexican food like my entire life. I also, I mean, my parents are Korean, uh, so I love Korean food. And I obviously, at first, when I was a kid, I actually could not handle spice at all. Like I was like the, the, um, the odd one in my family to not like spicy food, but I, got to appreciate it as I got older so now I eat it just fine but I still don't do too much 
but I'll eat like all the traditional dishes like kimchi jjigae and like like all the hot stews and stuff. That's the good stuff. You think the fiel is worth the price? Uh, how much does a fiel cost nowadays, guys? I actually don't know. Fiel used to cost more. I feel like it costs less now. So I would say yes. I think for a tray mount, it's solid. It's really heavy. It looks pretty nice. A lot of people have enjoyed. I mean, Nathan got famous thanks to his fiel with holy pandas, and it's probably the most requested, most watched video on his channel before all the big, big ones. But um. Like everyone's like, oh, how do I make my fiel with holy pandas sound just like Tejas? That's that's literally what that's like the top number like that's the number one question asked on like on Reddit, right? Uh, but yeah, feels nice. Feels a nice board. The Daisy, <laughs> yeah. Let's see. I made a syrup from Avanada pe peppers this week. Gonna make a soda. What? Soda? Dude, that sounds amazing. It still smells like ill fuck you. <laughs> Yo, that's that's sick. I want to try these things. That sounds amazing. Oof. Oof. Pretty rare to see Asian immigrants in a non-English speaking country. That is true. Um Definitely less, uh, more common now, but yeah, it's definitely not super common. Uh, it's become a lot more common nowadays, though. Um, yeah. Where's my, uh, hold up, give me one sec. Sorry. Um, everyone got the feel and kept asking me why there's... Yeah. Spicy beer is the shit if y'all haven't tried it. I mean, I mean, same thing with chelada, like micheladas. Yeah, micheladas are awesome. I love micheladas and Bloody Marys and that kind of stuff. Um, micheladas are awesome. Yeah, straight up. Michelada, easily one of my most favorite drinks that I miss, actually, because I don't have them here as much. But when I used to live in Mexico... I had it pretty often, uh, but certainly not anymore. But Michelada is very, very delicious. Um, so Michelada, for those who don't know, it's a drink with beer, um, like Clamato, like tomato um, juice, and um, like spices. It's very yummy. And like lime and salt and that kind of stuff. In Mexico, the food is awesome. Ah, yeah, I know. My homeland. What is the extra board attached to the PCB? Uh, it's a it's a daughter board with an RGB um, circuitry, like RGB LED circuitry on it. Is there a round of round two of SA Bliss soon? I believe Minterly is designing a round two. Uh, she's designing a sculpted SA Bliss, I think. I think that's right. Uh, just. Correct me if I'm mistaken, but it's something like that. You really haven't lived life until you've been drunk and your mouth is on fire? That sounds like pretty much anytime I eat like tacos or like whatever after I'm like drunk. Or like eating like spicy Korean food after you're drunk. Mm. That's good stuff. Are you in the US? Yes, I'm in the US now. Sculpted essay will run in September. Thank you so much for the news, uh, Peaches. I, I honestly don't follow everything nowadays. I hope this bouncing is not gonna make it worse. I mean, mouth is on fire from the very thing you're getting drunk on. It do it just do be hidden different. Oh, okay, I see. I mean, I've had spicy beer as a punishment. Like, I've had spicy beer from, from like, like, um, kind of like King's Cup, but basically the same thing. Come on, focus. What is it? Why is it doing this? 
autofocus, hello? Oh, I see now. It's a, it's a mic cord. Is it? Uh, I'm not sure just gonna set the manual focus so it just stays there. Uh, is it worth getting a second tofu? No. I say no because I personally uh, would say why don't you why spend the same amount of money for a board that you know exactly what it's like when you can get something different try something new and you know you might expand or change your preferences over time by doing that uh, why not though you know So also train mount you can swap out PCB and plate super easily. That is correct. You can also do all the modifications you need with only one case. Why buy a second one? The whole benefit of train mount is indeed being able to uh, easily change your your specs, right? So Browns, mmm. Vintage browns are nice. MX browns are nice for the MX brown haters out there. MX browns are awesome. Go MX browns. MX browns with a slightly heavier spring are so good. I mean, stock spring's fine, but slightly heavier is the way to go. Like 60, 62. Mm. Alright, let's, uh, Test these out. I enjoy them a lot. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so we have a EPBT Kuro Shiro today for the build. Um, that was requested of me, um, to use. So we're gonna use that today. Um, sorry if you guys wanted to see anything else. Uh, I might, I could bring out a beige set if you wanted to see that. But since that, this is the build that's gonna have have. Uh, these caps, I'm just gonna use these to, to test. It's gonna be it's gonna be better because if we use these um, to test, because these are PBT, we gotta make sure that the stats are okay with PBT caps. Oops. All right. this okay oh my god another raid yo Jeff hello welcome party of 50 welcome welcome guys hey Tyler Jordan's hello how are you guys doing tonight Hope you all had a good stream. What were you up to, Mr. Jeff Langylandia? How was the land of Lang tonight? Lange, Lang. I I have a hard time pronouncing that. We all got yeeted from a rigged game of marbles on stream. Sounds like marbles. Sounds like marbles. Never win, always lose. Okay, we're using a 6.25 today.
what set is on the Polycarp case? Uh, the Polycarp case currently has a uh, Hebrew Green by Hammerworks. Yeah, Hebrew Green by Hammerworks. So I'm gonna get a piece of foam. Cause, uh, where's my foam? Where's my piece of foam? H1 and MX Black, I somehow feel age 78 gram H1 is more he is heavier than MX Black. MX Springs are very inconsistent. Yeah, they are. They are. MX Springs are kind of inconsistent. If you ever looked up, if you have ever looked up the spec sheets for MX Cherry MX switches, they have like it's like plus minus 15 or something. It's like plus minus 10, plus minus 15. I don't even know. It's so bad. The variances are huge. Do you like retro games? I do. I do like retro games. Okay, left side's a little bit, a little bit weird. Is this a two U shift or a two point two five U? I think it is 2.25, okay. Sprit is the best variance if I remember. Should I just order some TX80 gram springs and swap? Yeah, yeah, just just swap. If you're in doubt, if it for springs, if you're in doubt, just swap. Like it's only what, like 10 bucks? 15 bucks? For 15 bucks, you're not losing out too much. You would rather have a consistent experience for 15 bucks, right? Oh god, this is a little bent, I feel. This enter is like, so bendy that, like I can feel how tightly, oh my god, okay. Oof. Is there a different one here? A little better than this. I'll try the GMK one too, though, because trying PBT is all good. But if the, I need to make sure it all works. Oh, okay, this one's better actually. So a little bit more lube on the right side for the backspace and the. And the um, enter. Cause, yeah, it's not sounding too good. Any bananas? Yeah, EPBT has bananas. Okay, and on the right side of that. <sighs> um, some are silver colors, some are gold colors. You mean MX springs? Yeah, MX springs are super inconsistent. That's for sure. Especially if you get any woo, vintage. Oh god, so tight. Um, 
Planning does all the time. What? Oh, uh, retool blacks? Yeah, I've used retool blacks. If so, are they good at all? I heard it just depends on the batch. Yeah, it does. It depends on the batch. <laughs> Jeff Leopard, hello. Well, well, well. If this isn't Mr. Minifigurines. Hello, Mr. Minifigurine fan. Big fan of minifigurines and vinyls and vinyls. <laughs> oh man, number one fan. Number one. Of <laughs> landing keywords. <laughs> Arrow is what I've heard. I mean, Arrow is where a lot of people bought a lot of their retooled blacks, but it does not guarantee that they'll be good. Uh, mainly because, yeah, it depends on the batch. It just depends on the batch. Sometimes the batches come out slightly scratchy, kind of, you know, inconsistent. Um, but the question is, after lubing them, how are they? Because sometimes they do just kind of break in, and if you lube them, they kind of kind of even out I guess it kind of like it's kind of isn't isn't that bad as you first thought it was it is true though that lube does not make a bad switch great it can only make a good switch great so <laughs> you get lucky or not that's the game with cherry yeah I agree with that when buying worn vins from a trusted source, how many should one expect to count for cherry picking, potential dead switches, etc.? To be honest with you, I am not sure. Um, I would say, I'm gonna try to jump GMK this time. Um, I would say like, get like, I don't know, like, it's like 20 switches, 20 more switches, I don't know. At least 10 extra. Yeah, 10 extra is a good rule of thumb. I'll say at least 10 and then kind of go from there. Okay, that sounds okay. Hello everybody, that's Stash Build Boards. Hello Stash, how are you tonight? And hello George, hello. Whew, it's hot. Okay. My, uh AC is going back on. Apologies for that. It's just hot AF. Alright, cool. Um so, switches. Let's just put on all the switches. What is this? This is a Matrix Lab 8XV 2.2. Having a good time uh, working on the 3D printer per usual. That's cool. 3D printing sounds fun. I've uh, I've never owned one, but I used to work in. I used to, uh, you know, have stuff printed out in the make at the maker space. Oops. My... Okay. 
if you want a PLA play for anything, just give me a shout. Sounds good. Um, never tried a PLA play, actually. Uh, trade light. I mean, yeah, yeah. I've never tried a PLA play. That'll be interesting. It doesn't warp. You don't experience um, issues with warping for PLA. So I feel like when you extrude something that's long, you could bend, right? It could warp. Not at all. That's cool. Okay. I thought long prints kind of suffered from that, though. I built my 165 with a PLA plate I printed. Oh, that's cool. That's neat. I actually was gonna rebuild my 160 with a um, polycarb plate sometime soon. Um, just haven't gotten around to it because I got client builds to work on and I've also just been kind of short on time. But yeah, hoping to do that sometime soon. Uh, polycarb half plate build. Um, been wanting to do that. Any benefits to PLA versus POM and Polycurb? That's a question for Mr. Stash. So, I don't know myself. Sup, Lightning, how's it going? Saturn OG, hello. Um, it's, it's going all right. Uh, build is uh, taking a little longer than the usual, but uh, it's going well so far. Um, had kind of a shitty day today, honestly, but other than that, uh, you know, back streaming and things are going okay. But, you know, it do be like that these days. At least you do get to build that beautiful 2.2. I agree. That's the spirit. Sorry you had a bad day. Yeah, it's okay. It's just some personal things. Way she goes. That's right. Cell of E. So we have this blocker right here, and then we're gonna have uh, 6.25U spacebar. I mean, one point. So let's measure it out really quickly. I guess this blocker is big enough to cover, so this should be fine. Oh yeah, step caps or regular caps? I didn't remember that one. Stepped or regular? Stepped. So how are you guys doing, um, Saturn OG, Jeff? I feel like uh, I don't see you guys too often, uh, aside from stream every now and then. Uh, I missed that Clack Fancy event this uh, Wednesday. 
this past Wednesday, I pretty much realized I was too busy for it. And I was like, oh, guess it's tonight, but can't make it. The goose that you have must be a flexi beast. So it's actually my old build with a half plate. And uh, yeah, it's already flexy anyway, so the case actually doesn't matter too much. But it is very flexy with the half plate and the plate. Um, also, like the gasket double O um, PCB has that like flex cut in the middle, which makes it really like go down, like bend sort of. Yeah. Sorry to hear that. No worries, man. Um, heat wave. It's hitting LA this weekend, so I went for a swim. Oh, that's nice. Um, it's been hot here too, so it's not exclusive to LA, I'm sure. It's It's been a hot summer overall. It's been a very hot summer overall. Like, I feel like we have not been getting a break, catching a break with the heat these days. And people say global warming is not real, so. It's gonna hit over a hundreds next week. Oh, oof, that, that is a big oof. That is a big oof. Long day, worked on the house with father-in-law, tore down a ton of climbing ivy, had dinner after, dead now. Sounds like a physically rough day. Yeah, that, that sounds like a lot of work. Yard work, especially in the heat and stuff. Yeah, it's just, just so much work. You should definitely wear sunscreen even if staying indoors because of the UV. Is that right? I actually did not think about it that way. If you have a lot of windows, oh I see, yeah no, I have blinds. <laughs> I keep my blinds down all the time. Sunscreen indoors. I mean, only if you have a lot of sunlight coming in. Is what he's trying to say. Your windows should filter UV. Uh, I don't think that's always true. It depends for sure. Yes, there is two types of UV. UV it only blocks UVB, not UVA. But UV. So UVB is UV bad. So you, <laughs> I learned this from medicine. Um, UV UVB is the stuff that gives you like cancer. It's like UV bad. It's the stuff that SPF ratings block. Like at least FPF SPF of thirty blocks UVB type rays. I'm gonna flex again. I want a instant 60 PCB from the Clack Fancy event. First time winning a prize on stream. Nice. That's awesome. That is sweet. Instant 60, so you could make a quick build. It's like a hot swap RGB, I think. Is that right? Congrats, congrats. My sister's really into skincare, so I just borrow her stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm into skincare too, actually. I actually really uh, like looking into that stuff for a bit. Also, because I used to have really bad skin. Um, I had a lot of acne and stuff, and uh, I was like, you know, I was looking into like how to treat and like got like a tretinoin, like a, subs like a subscription sort of thing, like, you know, like prescription. And um, yeah, treat treated that a bit, and then. I try to take care of my skin as best as I can, so I have like a skincare routine sort of thing going on. Very Asian of me, isn't it? Very Korean of me. But yeah, it's a thing. I enjoy it though, I mean, it's good to have good skin. <laughs> I would like to look young when I'm old. Lighting is a connoisseur of many things. Not too many. But skincare is something I, I actually do enjoy knowing about because it's health related and I kinda, I like that stuff. This pen is not good. It's a Korean thing for sure? Yeah. Definitely is a very big uh, 
Koreans are big into skin because it's like the it's a very like a uh, very important thing about like making good first impressions and uh, like obviously like beautiful people kind of reach higher places that kind of stuff yeah cultural thing it must be the kimchi y'all <laughs> no comment <laughs> but I, I mean not gonna lie though kimchi has so many benefits so good for you. It's actually so good for you. It's proven by science. Rumor has it it prevents COVID. Yeah, I mean, I pre I'm pretty sure people said that when the SARS, uh, like MERS and SARS were around, they always said like, oh yeah, um, kimchi, uh, good good prophylactic food for. Like preventative food for, for like respiratory diseases, like infections. Hilarious. I heard it makes you immortal, <laughs> bruh. All right, let's uh, be careful here. I don't want to rip anything off. Finally get to the soldering part. Oh, sorry, it's been so long. It's been a longer stream today. So hey, you get to hang out longer with me. Gut bacteria is underrated for how much it affects the rest of the body. I mean, that is true. It's part of your normal bacterial flora in your body. So, yeah, protecting your your protecting your protective bacteria is is a is definitely a good thing. Obviously, if you eat like crap, like yeah, you're only hurting yourself, right? So. Is beer fermented food? I mean, it is fermented drink. <laughs> but I mean, I guess it counts. I guess it does count if you want to put it that way. <laughs> Wait, what's, what's going on? Okay. Um, solder and I need a fan but the ethanol destroys gut bacteria it does ethanol destroys like everything by the way ethanol like destroys everything in your body it's an acid causes like stomach problems kills your liver your pancreas your mouth actually <clears throat> a lot of shit bread in a can oh yeah it's gonna be loud I'm gonna move this away from you guys. RTX voice on. Oh, actually, that reminds me. Um, I can um, I can put a noise gate on. Actually, I can put a noise gate on. I'll I'll do that for you guys. That should be uh better. 
Let me see if that works, but hopefully it works. Uh, actually, probably need to turn on the intensity of that gate. There we go. So it takes a few seconds for it to like turn off. I don't think it's catching the right frequency. Oh, uh, okay. It's too bad. <laughs> Just think of solder fan as ocean noises for the for the keyboard community. <laughs> it's the sea. The sea of keyboards. Um, let's see. Whew. Not exactly loud. Okay, that's cool then. All right, no, 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 no gate for you guys then. I mean, it's fine. I can't hear you over my soothing vent hood ASMR. <laughs> Um oh. <laughs> The real move oolong, hello. So um Actually today is uh I oh, never mind, I forgot what I was gonna say. I'll remember what I have to say in a bit. I guess I'll just talk about sponsors in the meantime, because y'all... Why is my name Lightning? Well, that's a good question. Um, My name, or like my username is Lightning XI, which is like Lightning 11, right? So XI is like 11 in Roman numerals. And the reason for that was because I used to be a sprinter in middle school. Um, like elementary, middle school, going towards like high school, I was a sprinter. Um, I used to do like a hundred meter dash, two hundred meter dash, four hundred meter relay, um, and I broke the eleven second um, record for the hundred meter dash when I was in middle school. And so my coach back then called me like Little Lightning in. Spanish, which is like Rayito, and that's where lightning came in, and 11 is for like the 11 second record. Because he's the fastest builder in the West. Fastest builder has already been two, uh, 2 hours and 15 minutes, and we're not even close to being done. But yeah, uh, I that was, that's that's where Lightning XI came in. Oh, oh that switch. Let me place it. F 
fastest hands in the West. <laughs> I missed the PCB part. I'm currently trying to build a 2.2. I have no clue what cables to use with the PCB. Did you assemble all the parts on stream? Not the um, not the cable itself. I'll show the cable assembly in a bit. I actually did the work beforehand. Uh, well, I got help uh, from a friend of mine who has uh, had a matrix boards before. But yeah, there was um, some prep work done for the board. So mainly it's soldering the daughter board um, and uh, preparing a cable for the board. Um, yeah, those are the two most essential things. What solder do I use? I use um, Kester 6337. Um, if you actually type um, the exclamation gear I think exclamation gear should give you a link to all my equipment that I use uh, on stream and for my tools and among other things I think it was right this board drives me insane uh, yeah they're finicky and um, yeah the fixed cable situation makes things a bit more complicated Take the opportunity to flip this over. Oops, sort of flip it over, I guess. Fix this one. Love that I found your stream tonight. Just what I was looking for to watch while prepping the build I'm going to work on tomorrow. I'm glad. I'm glad. If it's helpful for you, that's it. That's, that's great. That's good to hear. Grab a 2.0 ADD if you want a standard cable. That is true. But it, I, I heard the 2.0 ADDs go for quite a bit these days. get my hands on a 2.0 ADD but yeah matrix stocks high right now yeah matrix stocks are always high for as long as they have um, closed buys like uh, restricted to China only it's gonna be tougher well, I mean what I personally don't like is how there are so many Chinese like group by participants who purchase like two three or four units just to sell them to the West and it's what inflates the prices this is just unfortunate <laughs> and it's always the same culprits too like if you look carefully it's always the same people who sell them I mean same goes for flipping in general though <laughs> it's always the same people If I was in NA, I'd send you 2.2. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, Espada. Um, yeah, the cable situation for 2.0s and 2.2s, the old ones, is rather unfortunate, in my opinion. It's just a lot of work to prepare. Um, I mean, I, I'm fortunate that I have a friend who knows how to do the cabling and stuff. Um, I mean, more importantly, the daughterboard is not so bad, but it's more so the 
the regular cable, the fixed cable prep, you have to be able to crimp uh, one of the ends of the of the the connector, basically the JST. So those you need to crimp. So you put the JST connector, the female connector, um, on there, and then. And then you gotta, um, you know, have the other side of the cable work after you've done that. It's optional to do like a Aviator or Limo or YC8 or whatever, but um, yeah, it's still prep work to be done. Here she goes, yeah. Velvet blushing. Instead of the Noah, oh, I see. Make sure if open 2.2 to West instead of Noah. Um, isn't? I feel like they're gonna eventually open up like a TKL, like one of their flagship TKLs. I feel it's just not time for that yet. I guess. I mean, I personally only like their 8x series. I actually don't like any other Matrix board. Um, I might like their HHKB looking one that they just teased. But even then, it's kind of, you know, it's not out there yet, so we don't know anything about it. I mean, the 8x2.0 um, ADD looks, looks really nice. It's kind of overkill, as it always is with some of these, but... Do you think the district keyboard meetup will happen in DC this year? If so, are you going to participate in it? Um, I don't think any meetups are going to happen for the rest of this year. To be honest with you. N nor do I think they should happen. I, I don't think meetups should be happening the rest of this year. Just a bad idea with the current situation. It'll not happen in person. I'm the runner, me and Max. Oh, there's Zach. Yeah, not a good idea though. Have you ever typed on a Leave 60? I have typed on one. Um, I don't remember. I mean, it was nice. The one I tried. I'm not a big fan of the, I'm not a fan of the big bump bonds. Oh, I see. I'm like, whatever about that too. All soldered. Um, okay. Gotta test it. Um, hold up. I am. Um, never mind. Yeah. Um, so I guess I'm gonna talk about sponsors in the meantime while I figure some stuff out. Um, so we first have Canon keys. I'm just gonna run through them really quick. Canon keys currently has Canon caps zero. Uh, they're Cherry Profile PVT keycaps um, by designed by Rensuya and run by CanKeys for $100 for the base kit. Um, you should check it out. It's a new, um, I think it's like, a, I'm not sure if it's a new manufacturer, but it's a new way to do Cherry Profile PVT keycaps, Dice Sublimated Legends that uh, Upas has been working on for a while. And um, they look really good. Um, I personally think they'll turn out really nice. Um, so if you're interested in that, do check out CanCap Zero. It's like a sort of monochrome theme set. Um, there's that. There's the Summer Palette Desk Mats um, as well on Canon Keys. Uh, tomorrow, actually, this is something I should tell you. Tomorrow, there's a bunch of extras going for sale on Canon Keys. There is, if you are looking for... Let's see. First Love, GMK First Love. Extras are going up tomorrow. Um, there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Like, there's like 10 or 12 desk mats going up. Um, the AE board, the AE board's Navy switches are going up tomorrow. So the Navy switches are new tactile switches. Um, that are like similar to MX Clears is what they're saying. 
Uh, you can find actually some reviews on YouTube and basically they'll be selling uh, sets of 110 switches along with there's also polyethylene stems you can get. There are also tactile stems, so you can use those for different switches. What tactiles are they? They are 68 gram switches that are similar to uh, MX Clears is what it's been described so far. There are a few preliminary um, reviews on YouTube if you want to know about them. Uh, I know that Minterly actually reviewed them uh, recently, so you can also check out her review. Um, I don't think she liked them from what I heard, uh, but I have not informed myself fully of the situation. Will I get them? Probably not. I actually have a lot of switches that I kind of want to run through before I get any new ones, but I'll eventually get to them. So do check out um, Kanaki's tomorrow at 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern Time. Uh, the navies are going to go up, and actually at the same time, the GMK First Love Extras and the Death Mats are going to go up. So that's tomorrow. Um, uh, okay, next up is a uh, Dixie Mech. Um, for for Dixie Mech tonight is a, is the last night for GMK Pono. So if you're into the cat theme and it's a uh, N9 um, um, like dark gray alphas and modifiers with a uh, pink, the same pink as uh, GMK 909 um, Legends. Uh, if you're into that color scheme, you should check out GMK Pono. Today is the last day for it. So if you're interested in Pono, buy it like now. Like don't don't leave it for later. And then on DixieMech.com slash lightning, you can also find GMK Minimal R2, which is going until the end of the month. Uh, there's drama caps and desk mats as well. Desk mats? Yeah. Um, then... Mint Autumn, I will skip for now, but basically Mint Autumn, uh, they work with um, polyethylene and they've worked on the Rukia for the Polycarp Alice layout um, keyboard, which is currently in production um, on the round two. And then um, they are currently still working on developing a TKL case made out of polyethylene. So something exciting to look forward to. What are they called? Oh, they're called navies. N A E V Y. Um, Visionaire. That, that's a switch name. N A E V Y. Navy. Okay, next up is uh, Novel Keys. And on Novel Keys. Um, uh, SA Skyrider and GMK Bento R2 are up and as you might also know you can use the promo code THUNDER to get 5% off all in stock items so that's for novel keys for prime keyboards is next prime keyboards um, we have alpacas more alpacas coming in later uh, Durox stabilizers, black smoky housing Durox stabilizers are currently in stock. There are going to be more uh, sets of those. So do check out Prime Keyboards, um, primekb.com slash lightning for those. And there's going to be um, the Meridian interest check went up. It's a Alice sort of style, like ergonomic 60% keyboard um, that you should check out. It's a collaboration with AIO3. And then the last sponsor is um, Project Keyboard. Um, so go head on over to projectkeyboard.com. And um, tomorrow is the last day for GMK Sumi. So if you're into monochrome sets and into Japanese culture themed things, um, especially inspired by the Sumi A style, um, do check out GMK Sumi. Tomorrow is the last day. And of course, uh, my own set. Uh, GMK Dolch R5 is uh, currently on group buy. Uh, we're doing okay. Um, I personally would like to see a bigger bump in sales for GMK Dolch R5. We're doing okay. I think it's pretty niche. I actually did not expect it to be like a booming success. Um, but we definitely will be hitting MOQs uh, like with extras included. Um, so I wouldn't worry about that if you've been worried about MOQs. We, I wouldn't worry about it. MOQs. Um, 
Hangul extension, they're all doing okay. Uh, I think Hangul could probably use a little bit of a bump as well as a base kit. But uh, Rama caps, they'll be produced as well. Um, so if you're into the Cherry Rama cap, you should definitely get it. Uh, because there's no guarantee that future um, Rama collabs will have the Cherry logo allowed for them. We had to explicitly get permission from Cherry Corp to get these made. So these are licensed, these are fully licensed Cherry logo keycaps that you cannot make unless you get the license. And so there's no guarantee that any future runners will have it. Um, so if you're into like the Cherry logo stuff, um, do, do consider um, getting the Rama keycap for that. Wait, which one? Um, so if you head on over to, uh, so I mean, do exclamation sponsors. And if you head on over to Project Keyboard over there, you'll find the Rama Cherry Keycap. There's also other vendors that are doing it if you're in a different region, not in North America. <laughs> I thought Cherry was the devil, the old guard. I mean, maybe. Oh yeah. Okay. So we are approaching the final part of this assembly. And for Espada, I think he was here earlier. Um, this is the final part. Can we have a glimpse of the daughter board job? Sure. So, okay, so let me explain. All right. So, I'll probably zoom a little bit. All right, so first thing, this is the JST mail connector. It's just soldered onto the PCB there. Now, the daughter board, okay, so you can see here there's, in this case, we have black, red, and, what? Wish it was gold, I only collected gold and silver Rama camps. Oh. Um, so here we have the black, red, and green connected to this second line over here, okay? Then it runs over to the other side where we have our daughter board here and the daughter board is soldered you can see right there black oh come on come on black red and green in that order going outside inward right so that's the daughter board job for this board right and then there's going to be screwed on to the case Okay, you caught that Espada? Okay, cool. Alright, so that's basically the daughter board situation. And now the cable situation is this. So the cable is, in my case, uh, in this case, this particular commission, we had a cable, custom cable made. Uh, YC8 connector on one side because so that you can have quick unplug instead of having to go all the way down to your USB hub or computer um, and um, This other side is going to be your JST female end which requires you need to crimp the wires at the end in order to insert them into the JST female side connector and you know complete the this end of the cable. So this is the part that plugs to the PCB. This is the part that plugs into the rest of the cable here. And this, you know, this is just your USB. But if you just have a regular cable, like basically you could just imagine this all together, but one end has to have this brass thing with the JST. Got it? Okay, well, that, I think that should explain everything. Let's get on to the rest of the assembly now. <clears throat> We've been uh, delaying this a little bit. So the last part of the assembly now, uh, first of all, we get these pieces here. So this is like a window piece that goes for the, so you just insert that window piece into the, slot here 
And then this is going to be the piece that diffuses the light from the um, RGB. Alright, so you just insert that here too. Okay. And then the next thing is we're going to grab our PCB here. And so we got to be careful now. Um, the daughter board is going to get screwed onto the case so that it stays still there. Um, and in order to do that, I'm going to grab onto, are these the screws? Let me see what we have here. Uh, these are replacements. That's the plate screws. Okay, I think these are all replacement screws. Alright, so these three screws I believe are for the little um, daughter board. Uh, these are Phillips. So Phillips, 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 Phillips Small Phillips actually. What's up man? Love to kills. Wish there which wish there were more good budget GB options. I mean there's a KVD 8X which is a pretty good option in my opinion. Uh, okay, actually I could use the bigger one. Okay. So basically on the other side I'm gonna screw on the PCB. So Should I have screwed this on before doing this? Hmm. I don't think so, but okay, actually, this this way. Wait. Oh, the orientation of this is gonna be this way. This way. This way. It's a pain in the butt, isn't it? Yes, it is. You think they have a connector for the daughter board? You make it so easy? Yeah, that's the. Yeah, I don't know. I don't understand that part either. <laughs> I don't know why they didn't do that. It's just so bizarre to me. Hard to understand why they would they would do that. Um, but yeah. There's no single tutorial I've been browsing through Chinese forums for three weeks or so. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty dumb. I do have to agree with that 100%. I should have screwed this on beforehand.
2.0 ADD looks looks even scarier. Is a Rama R5 is a Rama GMK R5 the Dolch one gray? Yeah, it is gray, the same color as the modifiers for Dolch. So it is gray. It is gray indeed. Ah, oh, this is ultra frustrating. Hold up. God, I'm gonna put this down for a second. Okay. Here we go again. You hurt my wallet, Lightning, but I'm grateful. I'm glad you're grateful. I'm glad you like it. It's done the right way. Okay. I am scared I'm going to snap one of these uh, wires. I'm scared about that right now. This is... I actually think I made a mistake. <laughs> I actually think these wires shouldn't have been... I should have desoldered these wires first and just done that. I might have to do that, actually. I might have to just desolder and um, solder them again in the same orientation. Because this is, this is dumb. Yeah, I might just have to do that for the sake of this thing to just work easily and like fit the right orientation. So where is that one screw? There we go. <sighs> Can't imagine you're supposed to screw in the tight. No, no, no. It is. It is. I I actually just realized that I made, made that mistake. Yeah. No. You're right. You're right. You're right. It's it was soldered in because it was supposed to. It was soldered in because they're just trying to show me that it goes in that order. So that's my mistake. So I'll just uh, desolder these. So green, red, black. Green, red, and black. I say uh, use double side tape. This board looks like a pain to build. It's not that bad. No, is the tiny board supposed to screw it in first? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, discriminate is correct. How about it? But you know, I was being dumb because I thought, oh, I already have it done. But you know, it's because I. I'm just trying to. <laughs> How long would it take to desolder the whole board using that? You mean the desoldering gun? Not that long, actually. Not too long. Maybe like half an hour.
Alright, so, okay, now it's just the easy part. Just gotta put the daughter board here. I'm an idiot. Why well, I should have done this from the very beginning. Screw it in. Screw it in. Yeah. It is true though, there are no guides to building matrix boards, only experienced people. Screw it in first, nice to know. Yeah, screw it in first. So the reason this was already done like this, uh, it was because to show me that, um, is to show me that that was the orientation it was supposed to go in. And then you just pass the cables through. Get some write-ups on Z Frontier for ADD at least. Yeah, that's true. By the way, do you buy these wires separately or did I get scammed? Uh, yeah, you can use any uh, small gauge wires, <laughs> pretty much. All right, did I say it was green, red, black, right? Green, red, black. something but I guess not okay cool we'll just get on to this
red wire is still too thick. All right, uh, before we put everything back together, we gotta test it. A little late tonight? Yeah, a little late tonight. Matrix builds always take longer. Was this originally YC8? No. Okay, so. Okay, I see that RGB turn on. And. Uh, wait, hold up. Okay, cool. Alright, let's stop. Uh, K not working? Maybe the switch is bad. Okay. Might have to replace one switch. But everything else looks okay. Okay. So just the K switch. K switch. I kept it on. have an NK65 entry right now and really want to do a brutal brutal 60 do you think I should go with something else brutal 60 sounds pretty good um, I don't see anything wrong with it we had some Unplug? Yeah, I already unplugged. I already unplugged. I unplugged earlier. But if you're talking about the YC, I mean the the JST, it's, it's fine.
There we go. Just need a replacement. All right, now we can put our screws in. Special you made the special cable you made is mandatory just for aesthetics. Definitely just for aesthetics. For I mean you can use any cable. You can use any cable. The requirement you do have for the cable is actually you don't even have to use a JST. You could fix it, but you probably want to use a JST. So the main requirement would be to have this um hold up. This and done. So you have to crimp it and put a female connector on it. So that's the main requirement. The rest is fine. And you should have this brass connector on it. What does the original part look like? What do you mean by that? The original part? I mean, it comes with this. It does not come with a cable. It does not come with a cable. Do I live in Israel? No, I do not live in Israel, no. The, the key set has Hebrew letters, but uh, no, it doesn't mean I... I don't speak Hebrew, and I don't live in Israel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does not come with a cable. You have to get your own cable. Yo, Alhex, thank you so much for the uh, 100 bits. That board is fire though, thank you. It's not mine, but um, it's a nice board for sure. Thank you for the simplification, by the way, helped me a lot. I'm just wondering what switch I'll put in. Creams or regional blacks? I'm to you. Keep coming and leaving. <laughs> well, welcome back. Okay, so there's our final product here. Okay, so now there's still some work to be done. The main piece of work that we just need to do is uh, screwing this onto the bottom. Okay, so the way this works is you can unplug this. So, as I said, this brass piece has to go here, okay? So, you just, in my case, you just pass through the connector this way. And then this brass piece just slots right in, right? So, I guess you want to give it some slack. So, then you just grab your screwdriver and you screw on this piece of brass the JST connector and my 2.0 is kind of finicky kind of want to fix it not gonna lie yeah so JST connectors are finicky overall um, like they can get loose and shaky kind of easily so yeah something to pay attention to all right so we have enough slack here um, so what you want to do is you want to just plug in the you just want to plug in the JST first. And then you can get some of the slack of the cable out as we go. Slowly, slowly, slowly. And then 
just sits right in. Right. together. All right. It's on. Now you just flip it over. Take our screws from earlier. This one use the bigger screwdriver. And it's lined up. Saying slightly, it's not quite perfectly lined up. Make sure it is. Is that your AC unit running? Yeah, it is. It is my AC unit running. Alright, uh, let's do some cleanup beforehand. Just make sure everything's out of the way. We're gonna need those. Uh, we're just gonna need these. Okay, we can get our, um, I'll let the client do the stickers himself, but let's get the bump-ons on.
Looks like we finally made it. Yeah. Hell yeah. be done by the client and oh just forgot this last one Let's go, let's go. Applause, applause, let's go. The joy of building these is finishing it. <laughs> it always makes you nervous because if it stops working for any reason, there's no way back. There's no way back. It's not easy, rather. There is a way back, but it's just annoying and complicated. All right. Keycap time. Which brand of stabs? Uh, Jirok stabs. Is this win keyless or not? I am confused. It is not, technically. It has, uh, people call them, like, small blockers or <laughs> some people call them China blockers. Uh, but basically they're 0.625U sized blockers. Basically, you can imagine it's a standard ANSI, so like the 1.25U bottom row, but symmet made symmetrical by taking out one of those keys 
and the rest smush together. Yeah, that's basically the gist of it. Have you noticed any issues with CRP space bars on Jurox dabs? No. Not well, not myself, but I make sure to so CRP space bars just like any PBT. You should always be if you're planning to use PBT on your build or ABS or both, you should always try both. Like both space bars because they're gonna act differently. Sometimes if you tune according to GMK, they don't act well with PVT because PVT can have warping, ABS can have warping as we've been seeing lately. Um, so always test both if you're planning to use both. Uh, if you're not, then just, uh, just stick to one. That space bar warped this one? A little. Uh, it's a little bit banana, but it's actually not that bad. I've seen, I've definitely seen way worse. Way, 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 way worse. I'm haven't been looking at chat at all. Uh, random stabs. I answered that. Notice any issues with CRP? I answered that. Interesting layout. Old rounds of CRP had some issues. Yes, looks so nice. I agree. Uh, my CRP. No wait. My the recent R two point two was pretty good with space bars. Yeah. Although they are also sending out some. There was some issues, so they are sending out some replacements. In the microwave, what paper towel? 30 seconds, it's not even that bent. Mad kick upset, like the holes are not even aligned. Oof. Uh, it sounds like warping like banana, so that's why it maybe doesn't uh, fit. Check with the GMK1 is slightly off. Oh, 
Oh, so like shrinkage. That's even worse than warping. Shrinking is definitely worse than warping because you can't do anything about it. It's like, it's not like you can recover length material, whatever. All right. Um, people are already claiming Olivia++ has warpage issue, like no need to panic until we receive our set. Hmm. Keyboard looks so good, I'm just so jealous. This particular build is insane. I, I appreciate that. I'm jealous of the owner of the build too. I don't own a single matrix board. I've never owned one. I've only built for people, but never owned one for myself. Uh, so yeah. All right. Let's see. Uh, it looks like um, everything's working. So cool. Um, let's get on to the typing test then. Finally. Uh, uh, oh yeah, this is awkward. Awkward placement for these. Um, let's see. Oh, oh crap. Forget that there is no, um, there's no, what should I call it? Um, control as caps. I'm gonna, I'm gonna open my auto hotkey script and make sure that's enabled because I don't like using caps lock. Um, <clears throat> and um, let's see. Du -du 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 Typing test. Oof, it's too big. Hold up. I'll uh, change that a bit. Right. Alright, there. Ooh. Also, lightning, I'm either blind, dumb, or missing a 1.25 UU keycap. I have no idea. Alright. Alright, goodbye. AC, say bye to my fan as well. And I'll turn off the music in just a second. Give me one second. Um, all right, these switches are already feeling pretty nice. Pretty excited about this. Um, all righty. Caps lock looks low crooked. Maybe it's me. If it is, I'll fix it myself. But actually, I think it's still. There's a cap. This is pretty straight. Yeah, that's pretty straight. Maybe it's the PVT. Oh, you know, it's just the. Oh, okay, it's just wobble. Okay, that's good news. It sucks as a builder. Uh, <laughs> having crooked caps is is a big no-no, you know. Like, but a lot of PVT caps have a little bit of uh, leeway around the stem. Like, you can rotate it a little bit. They have a little bit of wobble, so like, um, like it appears like it's crooked, but it's really just the the, the key cap. Um, yeah. Yeah, no. Uh, I always check. Uh, <laughs> makes me a little worried. But yeah, it's the spacebar is a little a little bit warped. Um, so that's why you can see a little bit more of a gap here than here. Uh, things like that. These these are just PVT things. How's a lube job? Lube jobs pretty good. Lube jobs pretty good. All right, let's let's give it as uh let's give this a spin. All right. I hope y'all are 
ready for the test. And I'm going to just put my mic. So this is a Matrix 8X V 2.2 with um, Vintage MX Blast Loop with 2.5 grade 0, 55 gram springs and um, switch films. Um, we have EPVT um, Kuroshiro, which is basically black and white uh, by Gok 101. And it's an aluminum plate. And uh, I think that's about it. All right, here we go. Alright, let's try this again. Screw this. This this is bad. Also my chair is like a little off. Let's try this again. Let's try this again. Seven, pretty slow. It's okay. A lot of mistakes though, actually. All right. Well, let's hear the mods.
that's what they sound like. Let's see. What did people say? Uh, notice the wing keyless is different than standard wing keyless. Yeah. Two point has China blockers. Vintage blocks really have the best balance between thock and clack. I do agree with that. Uh, I don't think vintage blocks need a lot of loop. I think light amount of lube is good for MX blocks, generally speaking. Springs are too light. They are pretty light. Uh, I normally use 60 or 62. 63.5 sometimes, 65, even 67 actually, or 68. Between 60 and 68 is where I have my sweet spot. Um, FY Ween, hello. Uh, what switches do you use on that keyboard? Uh, there are vintage MX blocks. Matrix Alpha sounds so similar to my Able. Typing on light springs is hard. Is the heat holding you down? It's not that hot. Sounds very clean. How do you tune those taps? I um, lube them with the um, Crytox 205 Grade Zero um, assemblier. Relate using middle finger for the U key, but for the U key middle, uh, it depends. Uh, my right hand does a lot of work. Uh, so that's probably why it's not the most accurate though. I'm practicing on that. How do blacks feel like the MX blacks? They feel very smooth. Um, these are looped pretty well, and they're also really smooth. These are good MX blacks. These are really good MX blacks. I think the client uh, looped these, and these are really done. They're like really well done. Yeah, no, these are great. These are really, really nice. Uh, nicely done MX box. And also like the staff sound very clean today, which I'm very happy about despite using PBT. Sometimes this can be a hit or miss. So, one more typing test and we call it a night. I think it's pretty late, huh? Let's see. streaming no one in keyboards that I know is streaming anyway all right what board do you find do you, what board do you rotate most often I rotate pretty frequently I rotate like every every week so I pretty much I, the way I rotate my keyboards is either I feel like using a certain board or I RNG it <laughs> I just run a RNG on my boards, like not a number of boards I have, I just do a random number and I'm like, okay, I'll use that one this week. Um, that's pretty much what I do, generally speaking. All right, here goes one more time. Have you done a stream showing off all your boards recently, comparing them against each other? No, and I have no plans to do it, at least for now. It will take a bit. Why Cherry Mix Blacks? Because they're awesome, they're very smooth. They're very good.
117. Not bad. Not bad. Yo, Mr. Jack Static. Welcome back for uh, six months. Thank you so much for the tier one sub. Thank you, thank you. Because they are the best. I mean, they're just they're just nice. How many build boards do I have? Uh, if I feel comfortable sharing, I have. I have like. If you include vintage stuff, I probably have like over thirty boards. If you include vintage and topper and that kind of stuff, so I'll say like between 20 and 25. No, actually no less, fewer, 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 like 20. But there's a lot of like smaller builds. Like I have like, I, I kept a lot of my firsts, like kind of like I kept like my first custom, I kept, I kept like my, um, I kept like my first Alves build because I liked it a lot. Um, oh, like my custom Alves build, I like kept, like I have like like it's like semi vintage builds they're like old cases like repurposed for like modern applications like you know like a TKC 1800 style kind of stuff so like I got like I have like a 3000 uh, like a cherry 3000 case built like a custom um, that kind of stuff so those builds do take uh, quite a bit of room but I don't use them that often I guess yeah I think active rotation is like between 10 and 10 and some, 10 and 15, I'll say. Yeah. But that's also because I, I like having different layouts and I like trying different things out. I mainly do it for informing myself, frame of reference, like having a better frame of reference for what layouts do I prefer, like do I use certain shortcuts, do I like, like a certain material, certain like elements in design, that kind of stuff. Yeah. I like the Dolch pack you did a while back. First custom, that'd be interesting just how far you've come. Uh, well, I rebuilt that one, so I actually will. I can bring my first custom. Well, like my first custom custom. So, so these are so I'm t when I'm talking about like repurpose vintage, so this was my first. Actually, this was my first custom. This was my duck octagon. The duck octagon V1 was my first uh, like aluminum custom mechanical keyboard. Uh, like that I built this as uh, V1 tangerines and um, yeah this has a palm plate I rebuilt it with a palm plate very thick case it's actually a very heavy case too uh, anyway and I think someone was mentioning the Dutch pack Grims, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's my precious gaff collection. But I really like, as you can tell, I really like, uh, I really like, um, like Dolch theme, grayscale sort of theme stuff. So, this, this, these are the few caps I really like. Went, went to get and, and stuff. Big fan. Um, but yeah, the got so LZSQ, congrats! That's an awesome board, Jack Static. LZSQ looks pretty cool, although I prefer the LZRE for proportions. But I heard the LZSQ was a pretty cool board. What exactly is this board? This is this is the uh, the Dolch Pack. The it's a keyboard that came on the Dolch Pack 64 portable computer. 
Um, so this is like it actually kind of stores like like you can imagine there's a box it's like the computer screen on here and this like fold it over and like like it was a box and this is the keyboard that came out of that portable computer and basically you can is this a pre-built um it it's a rebuild it's actually uh you could you could almost call it like salvaging like you you take the original portable computer's keyboard, you, you know, you unplug it, and then you take out the internals and rebuild it. Uh, but basically, this is what it is. Thoughts on Evil Dolch? Um, I personally think the contrast between the, like the red contrast for me is a little bit too strong and it's not like my preference I think well I like more like clear contrast like white on a dark background um, like that kind of stuff uh, I think the red is like subtle and like it's a very strong color and I feel like it would um, I don't know I guess it's just not so much my thing um, yeah Jay from Taco had recently bought one pretty cheap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was part of a portable unit that did packet sniffing. Yeah, that's correct. What switches are in those? Uh, so this one has Nolives. That's correct. This one has lubed uh, Nolives. And this one has, oops, uh, plastic case was fine. Uh, this one has lubed uh, C, uh, uh, C3 Tangerines, the first ones. So these are just regular, um, Kind of like regular Gadrol linears. And no, no worries. Questions are fine. Vintage gas. Yeah, sort of. Yeah. So that's kind of uh, what my first view board. I mean, that's my first custom over here that I still have, I've had for like three and a half years now. Um, and uh, Dolce Pack, it's kind of like that. I like that kind of style of build. So I like repurposing parts from other places and rebuilding them. Yeah. All right, so I'm um, just gonna do a tour of the matrix that we just built. Um, so let's uh, get the typing test out of the way. <clears throat> so So this is the board that we built today. This is the Matrix ADEX V 2.2. It has 0.625 U blockers here that separate the middle area from the sides. And okay, I hope I'm not pressing something weird because I probably am. Okay. This is the bottom. It says Matrix Lab since 2015. Matrix Lab is the maker, manufacturer, designer of these boards. These boards are modeled after, um, sort of modeled after the internals of the OT 360C, but they're a different design, obviously. It has the back design with the cable coming out here. Uh, the cable is a custom made. Little adhesive stuck here. I'll give it a clean in a bit, but it's just a little bit of adhesive stuck on there. Uh, but yeah, uh, as a side, pretty clean, a uh, very smooth case. The anodization on this is super nice. Um, very low angle, like the angle I think is. I don't know, maybe like six, seven degrees, maybe. I'd say like maybe like seven degrees, right? Pretty low angle, uh, relatively low angle, I guess I've seen worse. 
I guess like somewhere in the middle actually. Um, has this like nice um, LED. Whoa, did that change? That was not what it had earlier. How do you change that? How do how how do you change the? Uh... Oh, oh, is it pause? Pause tab. <gasps> How do I how to make it turn? Oh, did I just turn it off? Ah, there we go. Pause I for inner. Pause I for. I wait. Pause I. Ah, pause C for colors. Ooh, ooh, oh, that is really cool. I like the blue sort of color. Okay, that's cool. Um, how does the add on this compare to other matrix boards, limb boards, or TGR? Uh, they're all very good. Um, yeah, they all are pretty comparable, actually. I'm, I, I'll have to say that a lot of boards I've seen recently are pretty comparable to each other, either it's it's kind of like the feeling I get that a lot of the the like manufacturers have been doing keyboards for a bit now that they've kind of like nailed down the the QC. So like I feel like a lot of the boards that are coming out nowadays come out with like the the quality of anodizing and stuff is kind of like up to a certain bar and like you won't see much below that because the people who produce them like the designers have high standards for them and they'll reject anything under that bar yeah and you know it's business so in order to get that money you have to you have to reach a certain quality yeah anyway so um that's all i got for today i hope you guys liked today's build um it's, it was very fun I had a lot of fun doing this build. It was uh, interesting, different. Uh, definitely doesn't happen frequently. Um, when I, then I'm building a matrix board. So yeah. Um, I don't think anybody is uh, streaming right now, so there's nobody I'm gonna raid tonight. I'm just gonna say bye soon. Um, I have uh, other builds coming soon. I actually have. I have at least, I have like at least three builds in the queue that I could do sometime as soon as I'm able. Uh, hopefully soon, hopefully soon. Yo, Poner, hello. Is there a version with Windows key? Uh, yeah, uh, there are Win key versions of the, not the 2.2, but the 2.0. The 2.0 has Win key versions. Uh, the 2.2 is unique because of these little uh, teeth, uh, 0.625U blockers. That's what's unique about them. Uh, but yeah, um, 8XV 2.0 is what you're looking for if you want Winky. It is different and weird for sure. I can't say I'm a fan of it, but cool. All right, well, that's all I got, my friends. Um, I have like other exciting news to coming. Let's see. I mean, I have a few personal things I want to work on, but um, yeah, I've been having a bit of a rough week, and I need just I just need some time to focus on some personal stuff. So I'm not sure when I'm gonna stream. Uh, like I don't have a schedule. I kind of always just drop out. Like you know, I just kind of drop in suddenly. So if you want to be notified as to when I start streaming. Uh, either join my Discord channel and like you'll get the everyone ping. If not, then just um, follow me on Twitch and sign up for the notifications and you'll get notified when I go live. I pretty much don't have a set time. And so, yeah, that's how it goes. This, yeah, this is win key. This is win key and this is win key. These are both win key. So this is control, win, alt, alt, win, control. Poner, welcome back for seven months. Thanks for the sub, man. How are you doing? I hope you had a good weekend. I mean, I hope you had a good week. My bad. It's Friday today. It's Saturday now, but yeah. 
All right. Well, that's all I got, my friends. Um, I'll probably see you next time. I'll um, have some other builds to do. So, um, yeah, I'll show up with more. And um, I have some... I have some more emotes coming, not for Twitch, but uh, they'll be on my Discord, so be excited for that. I'll have some more cool emotes because I really like the new emotes. <laughs> so I commissioned some more, so you'll see those maybe like in a week or two. <laughs> Alright friends, take care and have a very good night. Thank you so much guys. Cheers.